Hey folks, uh, this lesson is experimental probabilities of simple events. Okay, simple events just means one time. Okay, so here's our, our common core strand for our most awesome teachers and our questions. How do we find the experimental probability of a simple event? Okay, so so we can toss a paper cup. Okay, think of a paper cup that you drink water from, like a styrofoam cup or a paper cup or just think of the paper cup where um, uh, they call it truncating. It truncates. It's smaller at the bottom. It gets bigger at the top. Okay. Uh, okay. And so consider tossing this paper cup and fill the outcome columns of the cup uh, of the table with the three different ways a cup could land. Okay. So imagine that paper cup. It could it could land um, open ended up, or you can just pour water in it, or open ended down where the bigger uh, surface area or the, the rim of it is down, it's upside down, or it could land on the side right there, okay? So we're going to toss the cup in the air 20 times and record our observations. Okay, now to save time in this video, I'm going to I'm going to use what I did earlier and record these, okay? So open-ended up, that would be when the smaller, uh, where I can pour water in it, it happened one time out of 20. And open ended down happened seven times, and on its side, that's where it most of the time landed was on 12 sides right there. Okay, all right, so that's what that's talking about right there. So, do the outcomes appear to be equally likely? No way. Okay, so describe the three outcomes using words as likely and unlikely. Okay, so so unlikely was when it landed open end up, where I can pour water in it. Okay, on its side was when it happened most of the time, so that would be likely right there. So this would be somewhat likely, I guess. I don't know. So uh, that's what I would say. So on its uh, uh, on its side, I would say most likely, open ended down, somewhat likely, and open ended up, uh, unlikely. Okay, that's what the directions are asking. Okay, so use the number of times each event occurred to approximate the probability. Now remember, we did it 20 times. We tossed that uh, cup 20 times. Okay, so what might happen if we perform this more trials? Okay, so so open ended up. So it's going to be how many times it happened out of the 20. So that would be a one right there. Open ended down would be how many times we did that. So that would be a seven, and this would be that 12 right there. Okay, so let's do that right there. And then so. Uh, what might happen if we perform this more trials? Well, we just keep going and the probability of the cup landing on the side would increase. So would the other numbers also, but they probably keep landing on the side the most right there. So what is the sum of these probabilities? Okay, so we're going to add these. Now these all have common denominators of 20. So 1 plus 7 is 8. 8 plus 12 is 20. So we get 20 over 20. 20 over 20 is going to equal 1. So when we add those together, we're going to get the sum to be 1. So we can use experimental probability to approximate the probability of an event. So an experimental probability of an event is found by comparing the number of times the event occurs uh, to the total number of trials. Okay, so so when there's only one um, outcome for the event, so we're just tossing one cup. Uh, next lesson, we're going to do two events together. We're going to be tossing like a coin and, and spinning a spinner or a coin and rolling a cube uh, or tossing a cup and rolling a cube. There's going to be other events, but this one, we're just either doing one of them, either tossing a coin or tossing a cup or rolling a cube. So these are all called simple events. And if they are simple events, then the experimental probability is the top number is the number of times that event occurred. It's our, the, the numbers we're looking for, the favorable outcomes, okay? The bottom number is your total outcomes, your total number of trials we're doing, okay? So here's an example. Martin has a bag of marbles. He's removed one marble at random, recorded the color, and then put the marble back in the bag. Now that's important. We'll talk about it later. Sorry. Um, but you always have to put it back in the bag to keep it an independent event. And you'll hear more about that in the next lesson. But as long as he puts it back in the bag. And then he, he does it again. And he repeats that process several times and records uh, his results. And, and his results are in the table. Find the experimental probability of each color, okay? 
So, um, so first we've got to do is add up all those numbers to find out our bottom number, our denominator right there. So, so we get 50. So that's our denominator right there when we add those up. Okay. So then, now we'll complete that table of experimental probabilities and write each answer as a fraction in simplest form. So if you're in my class, I'd still like you to be able to know how to reduce fractions, okay? So we know the bottom number is 50. So red is going to be 12 over 50. Blue is going to be 10 over 50 and so on. So 12 over 50. Now I do know that um, 2 goes into these guys. So 2 goes into that 6 times, into that 25 times. So we get 6 over 25, okay? Blue is going to be 10 over 50. Okay, so 10 over 50. Now I know 5 goes into that 2 times. Actually, 10 goes into this. 10 goes into this once. 10 goes into this 5 times. So this reduces to 1 fifth. Okay, and then uh, let's see green. Okay, green is 15 over 50. So I'm going to put 15 over 50. And 5 is my number on this one. 3 and uh, 10. So 3 tenths. Okay. Now 13 is prime, that's nice, so we don't have to reduce this. So 13 over 50 is going to be for the for the yellow right there, okay? Easy enough. So what are two different ways we could find the experimental probability of the event that Martin does uh, Martin, sorry, does not draw a red marble, okay? Well, there's two ways we can do this to, to not draw a red marble. Remember, this still adds up to 50 right here. Let me, let me um, this still adds up to 50 right here, okay? So if we, so it's going to be over 50, so not a red marble. We can add up all the other colors, so 10, 15, 13 to get um, the probability that he doesn't do that. So that's one way right there. So um, we get 38 over 50, and then 2 goes into both those numbers, 19 and uh, 25 times. The other way is this. We can use the complement rule. Do you remember the complement rule? It says take away... What we're looking for, um, sorry, um, it's that it's the red. We're looking for the red, so we take this away from 1 because the probability adds up to 1, so we do 1 minus uh, that 12 over 50. So 1 minus 12 over 50 gets us that right there, okay? So, so um, one, 1 is the same as 50 over 50 minus 12 over 50 gets us 38 over 50, which is the same, which is 19 over 25, okay? There's a couple of ways. So I like the complement rule. It's a, it saves a lot of time a lot of, um, in a lot of spaces there. The spinner has three unequal sections, okay? And the spinner has red, yellow, and blue. The table shows the result of Nolan's spin. Find the experimental probability of landing on each color. And then, of course, simplify those fractions. Okay, so we got to add up those numbers and find the denominator. So our denominator is 30. And then so red is going to be 10 over 30, yellow is 14 over 30, and blue is 6 over 30. And then it's the reduction game. 10 goes into both these guys, 1 and 3. So that reduces to 1 third. And then 2 goes into this 7 times, into this 15 times, so 7 over 15. And then 6 goes into this once and into this 5 times, so 1 fifth right there. Okay? All right, so, so a simulation, you guys, is a model of an experiment that would be difficult or very inconvenient to actually perform. So we can use simulations to find experimental probabilities and make predictions. Okay, so here's an example. Okay, baseball players. Um, uh, a baseball team has a batting average of uh, 0 0.250. Now, they always put it in three decimal places, so 0 0.250 so far this season. That means that the team's players hits 25% of their chances at bat. So some are probably good hitters and some aren't so good hitters. And so use the simulation to predict the number of hits the team plays, the team players will have after their next 34 at bats. Okay, remember, 25% um, is uh, the same as 0 0.250. Okay, now do you remember? tenths, hundreds, thousands. So this is 250 thousands. Now they always do three decimals, and this is a nice decimal that, that reduces nicely. It reduces to one-fourth, and 0.25 or 25 percent is one-fourth. So think of something that's divisible by one-fourth, or one-fourth of something is very easy to see. Like a deck of cards, you guys. So a standard deck of cards has four different suits. 
hearts, diamonds, spades, and cubes. So what we can do is let the hearts represent a hit, and all the other suits would represent a no hit, okay? So to perform this simulation, we'll draw a card at random from the deck and record the results. Don't forget, we've got to put the card back in the deck, so there's still 52 cards in the deck. That would be called independent. We'll talk about in the next lesson. And then we'll continue doing that 34 times to see how many hits. This would be called a simulation experiment right here. Okay, I'm just moving that up right there, okay? So we'll let H equal um, uh, uh, the heart, and D equal the diamond, and C equal the club, and S equal the spade. And the reason why I uh, highlighted that was, remember, H for hearts is going to represent hits, and all these are going to represent no hit, no hit, no hit. Okay, and we do this 34 times. Draw a card, put it back in. Draw a card, put it back in. Draw another card. 34 times, okay? So let's just save some time, and here's an example of drawing 34 cards after replacing each uh, card, okay? So look, uh, I've highlighted all the hits, a hit, a hit, a hit, which is heart, heart, heart. All these red H's represent hits, so one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So eleven of these thirty-four cards right here would be the hits right there. So the probability is going to be eleven out of thirty. Well, the question asks how many uh, uh, record your results and then figure out how many uh, hits you think they would get. So on that simulation, it, I, a good simulation would be eleven. Okay, would it be exactly eleven? Probably not, but that would be a good simulation right there, and as long as you can explain that right there, okay? All right, so one more, you guys. A toy machine has equal number of blue, red, and white foam balls, which it releases at random. So Ross wonders uh, which color ball will be released next. So describe how we can use a standard numbered cube to predict the answers. Okay, since there's only three colors, uh, red, white, and uh, blue, Okay, so in their six sides, what we'll do is we'll let two of the numbers on the cube be one color, and the next two numbers be another color, and the next two numbers be the other color. That would be, um, uh, they would make it equal. So since they're equally likely to be released, and there's three colors, we can let the numbers one and two represent blue, the numbers three and four represent red, and then five and six could be white right there. Okay, so so what, after that, then we can toss the cube 50 times and determine the experimental probability of each one and pick the one that has the most right there, okay? So to predict the next color, we'd pick the color that has the greatest experimental probability, okay? Would it be right? I don't know. It'd be a good, it'd be a good uh, educated uh, analysis of that. All right, you guys. I hope that makes sense. And so, so uh, we talked about experimental probabilities with cards, with dice, with coins. There's other ways to do that. So maybe your teacher can help you out with that. Okay, you guys. Take care.